has developed between <coughs> the left of Lucius Polk and the right of Sam Wood. Although Sam Wood's right is probably just a few yards ahead uh, or south of us from where we are now. Um, so from our last stop to here, we've kind of now walked across the gap that has developed between Polk's left and Sam Wood's right. Um, a few years ago on one of these tours, some of you all may remember, we did Sam Wood um, and um, uh, the, uh, the right of um, Sam Wood is going to come up and it, you can see our vehicles up there and this mm -hmm. is the trail we started on. So the second, uh, excuse me, the Texas Monument is right up there. You know, just down the road is the Turchin Brigade uh, Monument cluster. Um, Sam Wood's right is going to strike the Union line um, there. In fact, now I can see the, um, the 92nd Ohio mine um, through the trees right down here. Um, so Sam Wood is gonna be striking there with his right um, and his center and left gonna go over, go over the crest of the low rise and out into the Poe field. Well, um, because as Sam Wood moved forward to west and not obliquely to the right, and that gap has opened between Polk and Wood, and Kessler can't go forward because Stewart is now in his front. Claiborne, what am I gonna do with, with, um, with Deschler? And um, what Claiborne um, orders is that Deschler move across the rear of Sam Wood and move into the gap that has developed between Polk on the right and Sam Wood on the left. Um, and that's how you wind up with Deschler fighting here. The order of Claiborne's brigades from north to south on the 19th and the morning of the 20th was Polk on the um, right or north, Sam Wood in the center, and Deschler on the left. But now, because um, uh, Polk obliquing to the right as he was supposed to, and Sam Wood going straight ahead instead of obliquing, the gap is open, and Claiborne now shifts Deschler into the center of the brigade. Uh, but they will fight Polk essentially on his own, Sam Wood largely on his own, although he is going to um, uh, be overlapping um, Bates when Bates attack too, and then Deschler attacks here by himself. And so the Federals along the line get to concentrate on Polk, Wood, then Deschler. And Deschler gets not only the fire from straight ahead, including very likely a shell from the um, Battery F, 1st Ohio Light Artillery, which will strike Deschler himself in his chest and rip his heart out um, and end his, um, his life. But the Deschler's men also are going to get fire from their right front and enfilade fire from along the uh, Union line. Um, and some from their left front um, as well. So Claiborne's three brigades are going to essentially waste themselves in brigade-sized frontal assaults against the Union line. Um, and what did that do towards achieving victory here for the Confederates? Um, yeah, but they were holding down quite a good bit of Union forces by virtue of them just being here uh, providing the fire and filling in the, the space. Um, uh, potentially, Thomas, yes. Thomas wanted more people, you know. That, that's right. Um, although Thomas is, is is requesting more people, mostly as a result of that threat by Breckenridge to the left end of the line. Um, but um, but is you know th this was supposed to be an attack to uh, to turn the line, um, and these three brigades have been um, been sent forward one after the other um, essentially. So, David, anything you want to add here? Well, just that, um, um, how much could Claiborne have accomplished? Um, he was, uh, the Union, the Union line up there is, is perhaps the strongest Union line on the battlefield. Uh, it's well supported uh, and well sighted. So uh, Claiborne, Claiborne has uh, some difficulties with, with controlling the division, primarily because of terrain, but, um, you know, uh, Dr. Robertson will, will take us out to, to Snodgrass Hill or Horseshoe Ridge and 
and run us up the hill and then say do that you know what 20 20 more times <laughs> um, you have to wonder uh, uh, what good what did Con uh, Claiborne accomplish how much could he have accomplished um, I I like to envision an alternate scenario where uh, where Hill simply formed Breckenridge and Claiborne in successive lines one behind the other uh, and then they struck basically John Beatty's brigade up there uh, and then basically you know Breckenridge turned and penetrated in into Thomas's rear he accomplished the thing Thomas most feared but he only did it with about a brigade and a half imagine if Claiborne's division were behind that and maybe Cheatham's division were here holding that line like Harvey pointed out uh, uh, yes, we're tying up federal troops, but but there's uh, they're set up to fail here. There's no weight behind <coughs> any single one of these punches, and um, and I think that's that's primarily Hill. Questions, observations. Okay. Um, we um, have um, have. Almost made it back to um, to our vehicle, um, and it is um, uh, for for once a morning um, uh, talk that ends um, before noon. <laughs> yes, so, um, well. um, the um, the snail was wrong. Yeah, the snail, <laughs> the snail was wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, and and uh, did somebody video the snail? So uh, <laughs> we use that as an hourglass. So, uh, um, the um, so um, uh, I'll direct you down the, uh, the trail to, um, to your um, automobile, and um, uh, you are um, now responsible for yourself even more so than, um, than normal. Um, and you can, um, can go up into Fort Oglethorpe and forage off the population for a few minutes. And we'll see you back at the visitor center at 1.30 for our uh, fourth walk in this um, seminar. I know where I can find some escargots. Thank you, Dave.